Tree. A spec. Banks. Scoop counter. Oh shoot. Neil counterplan. Trade. A spec. Banks. Everybody now ready? Cool. <clears throat> Couple of normal things happen on the yellow file. First, there's a terrible extension of consequential sum in the one error. There's no articulation of why it's valuable for us to prioritize consequences over the first ethical evaluation they've conceded. Two uh, work exists between the contrary. One is the consequences we care about are first and forward. Why are ethics what sort of consequences we care about? Do we care about reward? Do we care about biodiversity loss, etc.? What do we care about? Secondarily, they see the consequences are always probabilistic predictions. We don't know exactly what the consequences will be, but we do know the ethics of our insurance. Why ethics should come first? Should come first in the base seconds. The conditionality is not the impact of this. Why conditionality would be money issue? Even if the we somehow still in seconds, there wasn't a contradiction between our arguments. They just conflict. They only knock. But if this is not a counterplan, a counterplan partition just as competition is not any residual offense. But the counterplan that would also apply to plan trade advantage. There is no reason why trade would be able to solve for or any of the scarcity of these scenarios. Exactly the one that's not an incentive for trade between the countries where they are scarce in their resources in the first place, which is the only condition for those conflicts. Do you mind what happened? Usually, there's not a particular how trade with Africa is particularly important. Is why we wouldn't intervene in Africa. We tried for something additionally. They conceded the China bashing claims on the on the counterplan. There's no articulation of how they would solve the inevitable China bashing. Because we're not going to the Supreme Court, they have no permission to shield them from that. The Congress will always have a sense of bash China, even if they don't do it through trade, they'll do it through curse manipulation, they'll do it through human rights abuses. And then, which means that we don't have a established trade relationship with China, which means the US and China can always still break out into war, which is one of the stories discussed on the Christian Aspects of the law. I'm going to the Nightmare Chinese, but I wish I was there. Still, sort of advice, I think it's sort of negative advice, primarily with the Black House members, and two ways, having the last speeches, we are more interested to see there's an incentive to have the same things to the two ways, which means the Black House is always something for adaptation, not actually development in addition. We don't need to kick arguments, but you can straight up turn the two ways if you want to just stick us with the most means, it doesn't matter, reasonably, which should apply to you, which would be reason why you wouldn't be excluded. They can exclude things like pigs. You can never tell what the pig is. That was hard to do. You see, they're not answering the base advantage. I'm starting with the pig discussion. There are a couple of key distinctions. First is there were two who go arguments and blocks why the federal distinctions are bad. One is that the exchange rhetoric is bad. One is that the climate conflict discourse was bad. Those were separate. I'm not going for any of these. You shouldn't use exchange rhetoric. Just going for the climate conflict discourse, which means all the analysis about the wrong methods doesn't apply because the pig just advocates the plan without the climate conflict justifications. You can still use things like exchange like ocean biodiversity is going means the human race is going to go extinct. But you shouldn't do it saying that there's a war that's going to come because that is what causes all the problems. There, if why would the theoretical basis of this counterpoint justify there is not an offensive argument as to why the counterpoint is a bad idea. There's not an offensive justification as to why climate conflict discourse is necessarily good. I'm not going to court. The activists we should probably doubt their 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 terms to bring is not coming to start relation to why those institutions are going to collapse. That's whole war. Why the two big large differential in terms of use developing a sufficient amount of technology to be suddenly the leader in the world is going to go into change. At best, gap is a necessary condition, but not a sufficient one because they have no articulation how the U.S. is going to be able to do it. On the other hand, Kyle Ed says that if we develop those technology, that would be great. But doesn't articulate why China or India would have an incentive to go along. We read out in the case that the plan were implemented with the justification is that would be less likely. So in the base. I mean, you should be imagining that the, 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 the plan, if you go to front of the plan is implemented with this sort of discourse discussed at the national level, or if you vote negative, imagine the same plan is implemented, but with our sort of discussion on how climate conflict is a bad discourse. They have no offense because the death argument is okay. Just like there are only sort of possible offense, even if you think the death of group stuff applies, what is the internal mobilization? Their argument about how their argument about extinction is about possibly mobilizing the domestic public against the Tea Party, which doesn't matter because their internal like, already makes it sufficient to solve what the plan passes, which the voting they would also do, but it is the question of mobilizing other governments internationally, because so there's only risk. That that the the pig sauce better. There's not articulation to why presumption was shifted. The other question is probably applies any sort of link argument is inaccurate because it's not just about Europe. They said Europe would experience the problems because of a bunch of people moving to Europe, which is a sort of fear mongering. And the Zimbabwe says there's some criticism. Additionally, it goes on to say that quote Africa would need more stability, even if China operations were running tight. The Middle East would experience a lot of food and water insecurity, increased pressure immigrating across borders. Asia would suffer from the water and spread of infectious disease because of that. Excessively linked to our arguments. Given the theory, maybe because of one hour, it's pretty light here. It's definitely justifiable. They say that there's a permutation of separate permutation. No, it's a question of what we should consider competitive, which is why it's on the three debate, if I think that if you decide that justifications are good for establishing competition, then the permutation is definitely separate to be should be checked, but you see now their only argument. So why the competition is bad? Or, I have three things. One is that it makes them debate against themselves. Two is that uh, we don't have a defense of textual competition. It should be functional competition. This is a debate about what should be considered uh, functionally competitive. If we want the justifications have an effect on climate policy, then it obviously has a uh, functional competitive. There are also techie arguments that they have not worth it. First, the representation is bad. They have not won. The representations have no effect on climate policy, which means that we definitely have a risk of it being necessarily important. Second, it's predictable because the argument is that we get all the picks. Just picks out of offensive justifications for why the plan should have and they are predictable because it's not a word picks. The justification is there's an inherent limit on what those picks can be. Third is education because uh, it's important to let our representation be in the Kind of the climate policy, given that it will affect negotiations with other countries. For this ground, the plan needs justifications, and we need access to be able to answer those and get off as part of the for those visits to act. You can see that the DR firm has an incentive to do things like shift down to deferred works when they agree to capital gains and the OAC and just kick basically into the advantage of the impact term. Six days, we see the increases, but the access goes all be permanent because they have to. But not only 
the claims they make for also the warrants for the judicial aims of foreign permit. We saw resolve any sort of competitive equity from the foreign advisor based on the other flow of news. They promised decisively to be described before a bunch of reasons. The warning are do not answer. I'm going for this because of the black versus lawyers. It's not allowed to be our answers. It was a strategic decision. Do we find our teachers to be off of that? They said that we don't have problems. If we don't change the justification, no, the comparison should be between the plan being implemented with their justifications or the plan being implemented with our discussion of how we strike up the plan. They've conceded all the arguments why it would uh, delay international things and uh, international agreement uh, negotiations. Our argument is that it kills negotiations because uh, they face it about a national security concerns. You can have a little bit of warming happen and still prevent a war from happening, which means that uh, A, it means that the third world countries will always be subjugated in the neg discussion of the negotiation. Second, it slows down negotiations because there's less about panic because we don't need to prevent all of the warming. Uh, we should prevent enough so that uh, a large conflict doesn't uh, break out and affect the United States uh, uh, security concerns. Additionally, means that China will be less likely to get on board because China sees that uh, if they leverage things like climate change, it is a natural security concern to the U.S. It becomes a bargaining ship uh, for them uh, because of that discourse. Usually, the essence is not answered, even if it is based on old stereotypes. There's still an aspect of colonialism and telling other countries it is a form of xenophobia. Uh, why does a country, why does somebody who wasn't living in Austria uh, before climate change have less of a right uh, to the water that exists in Austria when there are climate uh, change justifications because of a form of xenophobia? The other people across the border don't have the right to our resources, which is uh, fundamentally an unethical form of colonialism. And if we went ethics first, which I'm pretty sure do because there was not a good extension to why consequences should come first. Then there's a default uh, for the uh, pick. Uh, there's not a record one presumption flips in the other direction. Even the tiniest risk of offense, and there's not a salt just to account for the enacting part of the plan, uh, means that, uh, go negative, um, we solve warring better and aren't unethical. Uh.